my name is Hydrogen Heather and thank you so much for joining us for today's experiment of the day. Today we are going to do a chlorophyll extraction. Super exciting and uh, I should note what day it is. It's Tuesday, March 31st. I hope all of you have had a great morning of remote learning. We've been on the job since about 9 o'clock and we've had two recesses and now it is experiment time. But wait, hold on one second. You're wondering about our beautiful flowers? Well, thank you for asking. This flower pot and the flowers in it, of course, are the result of last week's chromatography experiment. So uh, we finally got around to gathering together as a family and getting these cut and folded and put into the vase, just like shown on the lesson plan. So I hope that you have something cute uh, after doing that experiment as well. But let's jump into today's experiment of the day. So like I said, we are going to be doing a chlorophyll extraction. And I know that since pre-K, probably age two, all of our children have been planting seeds and putting them in a baggie and putting them in windowsills and watching the roots and watching the stems and watching the leaves. But when it comes time to start talking about chlorophyll and chloroplasts and cellular respiration and all of that terminology that goes along with how a plant creates its own food, immediately we see eyes glaze over. So rather than just talking about these terms, let's bring them to life. So for this experiment, the supply list is very simple. I believe in the experiment uh, list, it says use a paper towel. I actually provide, I actually prefer a paper plate. It's just a little bit more firm. So everyone is going to get their own paper plate, including me, because I love doing this experiment. And then everybody is going to need a coffee filter. And I know that we used this last week, uh, but this is actually not only great for chromatography, but it also serves as a real good collector when you're extracting chlorophyll right from a leaf. So everyone, just take your coffee filter and flatten it out, just like we did last week for our chromatography experiment. Okay, now, it says in the experiment list to use spinach leaves, but of course any green leaf has chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is what makes a leaf green, and I want to make sure that you're not having to go shop for anything. So rather than go shop for spinach, we actually went out to our freshly bloomed pear tree, and we got leaves from that. And then I looked in my refrigerator, and we happened to have a nice big head of romaine lettuce. So we're going to try two very different kinds of leaves, and when I give you your leaves, you're going to put them side by side on your coffee filter. And as I'm passing these out, I'm going to make one more note about the supply list. It says that you can use a marker. Sometimes I use this, sometimes I don't. Really all it is is a little addition of chromatography if you want to do it because the inside of a plant is just chuck full of water. And you remember that last week we used water for our chromatography. So if you want to, grab a water-soluble marker and draw a picture of a leaf. Okay, and then if you want to, when you do the extraction, you can extract the chlorophyll right into the middle of the leaf that you draw. And if that wetness touches the marker, then you're going to just see some fun chromatography. But that is definitely just an optional extra. Okay, so now we have our plate. We have our coffee filter where we're going to collect the chlorophyll. We have the two different kind of leaves on there, and that's totally optional. You can use three leaves, one leaf, four leaf, whatever you want. And then we're going to cover those leaves with wax paper. And then we just need something to actually extract the chlorophyll with, and we find that a popsicle stick works the best. You really just need anything with a nice, firm, blunt edge. You could even use the back end of a butter knife if you don't happen to have any popsicle sticks. That's okay, look, it's all still put together. So what we're gonna do is we are going to press down on that wax paper, and we're just gonna look where the leaf is green, and we're gonna start rubbing. Okay, now when you do this with your children, here's what you're going to find. In every group of students that I partner up with for this experiment, there are always three kinds of kiddos. Number one is what I call the Incredible Hulk, and that's the kid who's going to go so incredibly hard that everything just shreds to bits. All right? 
I think Daniel is my incredible Hulk here. But then there's always somebody who I call my Lucy Goosey, who we just can't get to push down firmly at all so nothing happens. And then, just like Goldilocks, hey, nice work, buddy. There's always somebody who's just right. So when you're doing this with your children, here's what we're looking for. We want to go firmly enough to where you can actually see the green coming out. And I can't show you this on camera, but just trust me on this one. You can see when the chlorophyll starts streaming out of the plant. And so I just kind of keep an eye on everybody. Oh, I'm starting to see some chlorophyll. So yes, that's it. Okay, so yeah, you're doing it just right, Nevea. Now, after they've been scratching for a while, have them go ahead and see the results of their work and then they can go back and finish because check it out. After I've been talking and scratching, I can see that there is little bits of chlorophyll on my filter. All right, and the longer that I scratch and the more persistent that I am, the more chlorophyll I'm going to get out of that leaf. So. This chlorophyll is really going to spark an interest. And after you've taken that out, you can tell your children or your students, this, this is that incredible chemical that transforms sunlight and water and air into food for the plant. And once they see that actual chemical in front of them and they know what they're taking out, you'll find that the children will want to go on and on and on until they get every last drop of chlorophyll out of there. So it's a really good lead in into cellular respiration and exactly what happens inside of this thing called a chloroplast, which is what you find inside green leaves. And the chlorophyll in that chloroplast is what makes the leaf green. One of the absolute most cool chemicals in the entire world. And then finally, for a little real world relevance, uh, you can talk about the fact that have you ever put a brand new pair of jeans on and then gone to a picnic or gone to a ball game and you get playing with your friends and you're rolling around and then you stand up and realize, oh, the jeans uh, are totally green. Hey, very nice work. Where my knees have hit the ground. Well, every time you scooch across the ground playing a ball game or playing tag with your friends, your knees are going through the grass and extracting the chlorophyll from the grass. So you've had experience with this amazing chemical long before you ever did this experiment. So for those of you who got the email this morning, you know that you can click right into that email and the full lesson plan is there as well as some background knowledge. If you don't have the email, just look into the body of the message that I wrote at the top of this Facebook Live Click below and the full lesson plan is going to be right here below the post within a few minutes after we are done filming. Have a great day and we will see you right back here tomorrow.